This is Sam from the Mask and Journey podcast, and our goal with the podcast is help you to try to find your way in this difficult world. Your Chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and choosing the Truth Podcast Network. Welcome to Truth Talk Live. All right, let's talk. The truth is, I can't hide it. A daily program powered by the Truth Network. This is kind of a great thing, and I'll tell you why. Where pop culture, current events, and theology all come together. Speak your mind. And now, here's today's Truth Talk Live host. The judge is in the house. And I'm not speaking metaphorically. He really is and has been a judge as a career, a lawyer. And he's gone from the law of the land to serving the Lord and the law of the Lord. Now he's running one of the top apologetics colleges, Christian colleges and seminaries in the land. And wow. And he's in with me right now. Now he was on the show a couple weeks ago and it was hot, intense. We're going to talk about a lot of things. We're talking about the constitution. What does it say? And how important is the constitution in our land from a judge's perspective? And is he too extreme to say that we should have freedom of speech and freedom of religion, which the Constitution says? Also, we're going to talk about what's happening in Scotland, where they have officially officially outlawed anyone that speaks what the Bible says about gender and what the Bible says about marriage. And surprisingly, the biggest opponent who may find herself locked up in jail— is J.K. Rowling, the famous uh, 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 lady who wrote all of the Harry Potter books, who's basically said, come arrest me if you if, if I'm saying that that is a man, that is a woman, and there's two genders, and if the, the Scots, and if Scotland Yard calls this hate speech and calls me a criminal, then come and arrest me. That's what she has said. We're going to get your reaction to that. We're going to talk to the judge. The hanging judge. I don't know what kind of judge. This guys he's on it, though. He's in the in the house right now. I'm going to give a shout-out to the Nunez family. Just met him in Old Salem, in Winston-Salem, just like 10 minutes ago. God bless you, the Morlina family, listening to us on 97.7 FM. I'm going to say hey to Joseph, a Marine, who prayed with me on the spot. Big listener to the show. I didn't even know he had a cool cross tattoo. I said, dude, I love that cross tattoo. Here's our stage. He says, Stu, I know about y'all. <laughs> and he prayed for my nephew who just entered the Marine Corps and is at Paris Island, Watson, who was on this show. You know, well, he right. wasn't on the show, but I called, I told the listeners to call and give me some advice to an uncle. I had 72 hours with him, and they gave me some great advice on how to spend with him. Well, Joseph prayed for him. Dr. Carson of Date the Word was on speakerphone. He said, Doc, we got a Marine praying for us. We're going to stand at attention before the King of Kings lets this dear Marine Joseph pray for me in the parking lot of a coffee shop. The Phillips family from Wilkesboro, not far from where you practice the as state, judge. The state of Wilkes. I'm telling you, do, do, Dr. Ginn, not far from the courthouse where, right. that you that you darkened every day. They are listening to 97.7 AM 830. We'll take them all the way up to Wilkes County. we got to get a Truth Network station up there. And then the legend himself, the one that brought us together at lunch at 131 Main in Matthews, Tom Gentry. Uh, you know, the best thing about Tom Gentry is his wife, is his wife Brenda. I'm telling you. She's a doll baby. <laughs> well, <laughs> behind every successful man is a confused woman. It's like, right. how did that happen, right? Or a woman that's working really hard, right? What did you say about Boss Lady a second ago? You said? Yeah, she's uh, Do you want to talk to the man in charge or the woman who knows what's going on? There you go. So t- the first lady in the Gentry family, shout out to her to Tom Gentry, who's listening right yeah. now on his GE Tom's, radio. Tom's a great guy. He's listening to 105.7 FM, a little bit of heaven, on 105.7 in Charlotte. Tell all your friends in Charlotte, the home of Southern Evangelical Seminary, President Judge Phil Ginn. Sir, it's good to have you in person on the studio. We just had coffee in Historic Old Salem. Now you're on the air with me. I can't believe it. Well, for my Wilkes County folks, it's just like, uh, for me, it's just like a pig headed to slop. I mean, I just love it. <laughs> well, I, let me ask you this question. Back up. Who is Judge Phil Ginn? I want to get into your testimony, but how do you answer that question? Well, a lot of people have asked that question, and I keep asking myself that question. So, uh, uh, you know, the, I always said that uh, if you ever decide what you want to be when you when you grow up, it means you have to grow up. So I just bypass that question. <laughs> um, I uh, uh, have grew up in the rural uh, area of uh, North Carolina, uh, settled in the mountains, married a gal from up there, just uh, the love of my life, just uh, – 
chased her for three years till she caught me, uh, uh, and um, we raised four girls up there. I love it. I came to know the Lord, incidentally, uh, when I was five years old uh, and didn't fully understand the call of the Lord on, on my life at that point in time. I, I don't think any five-year-old could fully grasp that. Uh, got up, uh, you know, high school age and where you know everything, uh, and, uh, but I didn't realize that the world also had a pull on your life. Mm. And so that was a little bit like a lot of people. There was some confusion there. Um, and really, um, uh, it was in my uh, late 40s and early 50s where I think, as uh, one of my friends says, where, where men in particular uh, start changing for looking, uh, and looking for success to looking for significance. And at that point in time, I, uh, I went down to uh, Southern Evangelical Seminary to take one class so that I could better understand uh, my own faith wow. and grasp my own faith. Actually was headed in the door, Norm Geisler, uh, uh, who became a great mentor to me and a great giant in, in the kingdom of God, was walking out and he took me back into his office. And by the time I walked out of his office, I had signed up for the doctor of ministry program. Wow. Uh, at, uh, I was already a superior court judge at the time and, and managed to take a three year program and turn it into 10. <laughs> that is something all in one fell swoop. All and now, and now you're running the place. Yeah. You're the president. Did you have any idea then that you'd be doing what you're no, doing? Absolutely now? no idea. Unreal. Uh, I mean, this, this, uh, you know, God has a sense of humor. Uh, yeah. we, we make our plans and, and he just, uh, sitting up there like granddaddy's listening to two or three year old kids and saying, <laughs> you know, aren't they cute? They don't, they don't have a clue, but they really are cute. That's a great you know? illustration. <laughs> wow. So there you were getting your degree and you stayed as a judge and then your career took you different ways. And then the, but the Lord brought you back. Yeah. Um, I re- actually retired from the br- from the bench after 22 years mm. and at the end of 2014. So it's coming up on 10 year anniversary that that I've been off the bench. Um, went out to uh, Tulsa and uh, and ran a business out in Tulsa for three years and owned it and and uh, the Lord uh, allowed me to sell that to mm. somebody that wanted it a whole lot more than I wanted to keep it. Uh, I retired the second time and uh, then got a call from Southern Evangelical saying. Uh, it's some Macedonia called, you know, we need help. Come and help us. That. And so uh, I, I guess the real truth of the matter is I'm just a failure at retirement. Uh, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> that is something. Well, I don't think I know a lot of people that would not call that a failure, how God has used you. We're going to get an update on this school. And is this it's theologically sound. But what about all these Christian schools that are gone woke? What does that even mean? What about this Scottish ruling calling biblical speech about gender hate speech? And what does the judge say about that? He was a Superior Court judge. Now he's working for the Supreme Judge of the Earth. And he is in the house with us, Judge Phil Ginn. More coming up with him. We'll take your calls here in a bit, too, on Truth Talk Live. Hang on. Truth Talk Live. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. There you are, pastoring a church in Scotland. That's right, over in the UK. And you're preaching. And you say, this is God's word. Ephesians 5. Husbands love your wives. Wives love your husbands. And you, re- you read it. And then you read Matthew where Jesus says, For this cause shall a man leave his, his mother and father and cleave to his wife. And you read what the Bible says about gender, and suddenly there is the constable, there is the sheriff, the sheriff, everybody but Sherlock Holmes invades that church, and there's Scotland Yard saying, Pastor, step down from there, and you're in shackles, you're going to jail. You're like, Stu, you're nuts. No, I'm not. It's coming. Judge Ginn, Judge Phil Ginn, president of Southern Evangelical Seminary, Charlotte, North Carolina, who's now, who was an active judge 22 years, now he's serving the Lord in this capacity. We're getting to know him here in his testimony. Saved the age of five. Went from the, the law of the land to serving into spreading the law of the Lord and equipping students. Judge Ginn, that's a real thing in Scotland, and you told me it's coming to Canada. Uh, there is a bill right now pushed by Mr. Trudeau uh, and his uh, cohorts in uh, Parliament there in Canada. There's also uh, a bill in, uh, in England. 
yeah. to to do that. Same thing. Categorizing and, it as hate speech, absolutely, which is what HR fifty five in our Senate was trying to pass not too long ago. Fortunately, it got yeah. tabled. But so so it's hate speech because we say this is what the Bible says. We're not hating anybody. We're not forcing someone to be or not to be transgender. We're not forcing any, we're not beating anyone up or burning their house down because of that. We're saying be whatever you want to be. It's freedom in America. It's freedom of expression. Yep. But the left wants it to be a hate speech. They want to censor and judge as a Christian college and seminary president. How how can you be so vocal about this? You're writing these articles. You're appearing on Fox News. I mean, how can you well, just stay in your lane? Just teach the Bible. Why are you even speaking out about this, sir? Well, the first thing is I think our time's short. Uh, Stu, uh, somebody's got to speak out about this. Uh, if we don't, then we're going to be steamrolled. What's happened in America is that a group of elites have decided to take over the country, but in in fact, they took over the Democratic Party in an effort to do that. Uh, they want us to comply with a set of rules that, they, that don't apply to them. Uh, they can say anything they want to about us. Uh, and, and in essence, the I love the fact that you call this the Truth Network. We we have the truth that matters at SES. We we say we're standing steadfast on the truth at SES, and and the reality of that is, if there's not absolute truth, then truth's all over this place. And I'm going to try to get in control of government to force my thought patterns on you before you get in in control of the government to force me. And, and that's essentially what we have with the powers that be uh, in, in Washington, D.C., and in, in, most of our, in many of our states. I won't say most of our states. It is, it is an effort uh, by these people to take control and enforce their value system on us and to cause us to comply with their value system, e- even though it is a nonsensical value system. Okay, he's the president of a, of a major Christian college seminary, and yet he's speaking out on this this uh, legislation about hate speech. He's since speaking out on the left wanting to censor what Christians say. Is he dabbling in politics? Should he not be speaking out on these things? Should he not be talking about that? Should he just stay in his lane and just teach people the Bible? And what does the Bible say to this? I want to hear from you. Talking to the judge here on Truth Talk Live, I'm Stu Epperson. The toll-free number nationwide is 866-34-TRUTH. 866-34-TRUTH. Tree three four eight seven eight eight four. What if the courts order your church or your school to shut down because of COVID? You can't meet. And they've already done that. They've done that. What do you do? Do you stand up to them? What if they order your church or your school, your your class on Romans, get it out of curriculum, Judge, because Romans talks about biblical sexuality and it condemns the the worldly carnal view of sexuality. And it doesn't mean you cut their heads off and it doesn't mean you go out. It's, you know, it doesn't teach that. It's not hateful. It's just truthful. When the government tells you to stop teaching those courses, Judge, do you comply? We go underground. You're a judge. What if a judge told you not to do we're, that? We're going underground. Okay, we had a pastor on three weeks ago who, who p- preached against abortion. He preached a whole sanctity of life sermon, and I asked him, quit being political. Is abortion a political issue? What about this judge? We want to hear from you at 866-348-7884. And of all the people to stand up against the hate speech legislation that is now passed in Scotland, she may find herself in jail reading her own books, the Harry Potter series. J.K. Rowling, of all people, Absolutely. could be going to jail. She said, come arrest me. I'm going to call a man a man, a woman a woman. That's not hate speech. That's just truth. Well, yeah. and, and it's not hating someone that, has, that, that identifies as a wolf or an orangutan or whatever you want to identify as. It doesn't hate on them. It just says this is what God's truth is, and we can agree to disagree. We used to have conversations in this country. Absolutely. We, we agreed to disagree. Republicans and Democrats used to have good conversations. We loved each other, but we disagreed, you know, very clearly. And there wasn't this, well, you're going to go to jail and I'm censoring you. But now it's changed. Absolutely. Uh, tolerance, the concept of tolerance used to be that we could disagree on some basic things, yet we were civil with one another and yes. we appreciated one another as valuable human beings, regardless of what our thought process were. We might even argue and discuss it yeah. in, in an effort to win one another over to the position that we uh, we were propounding. But now tolerance is if you don't totally agree with me, then you're nothing. Okay. Uh, you're not existing. Okay, so should this judge, who's also the president of a major Christian college institution, should he stop speaking out about free speech and just stay in teaching religion? 866-348-7884. What's the role of law? What's the rule of law? What about the Constitution? We're gonna, I want you to unpack that for us. Maybe in the next segment. First, got to go to Big B. 
we got our first caller and the number if you want to join and grab a uh, grab a truth line and join the truth revolution like all of our new folks i shouted out earlier it's 866-34-TRUTH nationwide you're on the air big b thanks for calling in hey it's always awesome to get to contribute to your program, Stu, and I just want to say once again, thank God for your Truth Talk Live uh, program and this network that Big Stu put together. I'm listening to you on 106.5 here in the Dayton, Ohio area, and uh, blessings to you, Judge. And the answer to your question, Stu, is yes. Dear Judge Phil does have to speak into this, because why have the Bible, brothers, if we're not going to use it to affect our surrounding society oh and community. Why have it, brothers? Why, okay. why even have it? Okay. Well, now, to his question, so to, do, okay. Well, Judge, to his question, you know, someone might say, well, the Bible, well, that's about how to go, connect with God and grow in the Lord and get in church and serve the Lord. But the Bible's not to be used as a... What if people call you, you know, weaponizing the Bible for political purposes? You know, you're writing about free speech. You're writing about gender Things like that, uh, Judge Ginn. I mean, what if what if say, hey, get, get in your lane. These other woke Christian colleges, man, they're 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 not dealing with any of that stuff. They're not, you know, they're not talking about pro life. They're not talking about that. They're just talking about the Bible and and keeping it in in in, in that area. What do you say to that? Well, first of all, I might argue with you if they're woke, they may not be arguing the Bible's point of view. Oh wow! In that regard, first okay. of all, uh, secondly. Uh, I agree that we need to keep the gospel the primary thing that we talk about. Everything that we do toward freedom of the speech, freedom of religion, is is directed toward our ability to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's number one. We'll come back with more. Big B, God bless you. Thank you for your kind words on the show for listening Thank to you, us, sir. man. What a blessing you are, sir. Love you. Yes, sir. Hey, we love you, too. We'll be back with 866-34-TRUTH is the call-in number. Hate speech is happening, is outlawed now, or what hate speech is called. Will it come to America? We'll talk to the judge more after this. Hang on. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. The judge is in the house, and he's not holding back. He's unapologetic, and he is a leader of one of the top apologetic schools in America, Southern Evangelical Seminary, founded by Norm Geisler. Ross Rhodes was involved there in the early days. Legendary place. A lot of folks have come out of there. Our own Alex McFarland, Frank Turek, some great students have, have been influenced by their great teaching curriculum. And I guess the question is, should we just remain silent? You know, Judge Phil Ginn, you were a judge for 22 years, and you, you entered the, the, the business world, and you've done a whole lot of stuff, preaching, teaching, getting your doctorate there at that school, and now you're back running the school as the president, and you're, you've got this Truth That Matters podcast content programming. You're leading Bible studies, and you are very vocal. Like, I get articles about you, and you are speaking out loudly about these issues, and always graciously as well. And I'm holding an article right now where you talk about how the— uh, the left is weaponizing the law to de- to do things like declare Easter Sunday National Transgender Identity Day, and they instantly turn it quick and they say, "Well, you hate transgender people, and you you want to destroy these people, and you want to line them up and execute them," which is the farthest thing for the truth. If you're a believer, you want them to be led to Christ, but their agenda is to make what we're doing here right now and having a conversation about it and speaking the truth into this, make this hate speech. Yeah. Like, literally, I mean, management could come in here and just sh- cut the cord, just shut us off. I mean, we risk that going on the air every day. And our government is trying to pass laws like they just passed, this just happened in Scotland, for those of you who weren't aware, where they've said if you speak, if you misgender someone, if you call someone a mister, if you see a fellow walking and you say, hello, sir, and they identify as a man or they identify you know, as a raccoon, or they identify as a llama, or whatever, you could be taken to jail on a hate speech crime. That's not, I'm not exaggerating, am I, Judge Ginn? No, you're not, but that same thing is already occurring in America. We do not have the law that they have, but what's happened in America already, Stu, and it's scary, is that uh, Department of Social Services or Child Welfare Departments have been weaponized to take children out of the homes of Christian parents who do not recognize their gender identity, quote-unquote. Mm. 
uh, it's it's literally happened. This case actually went up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court refused to hear it. So it is yeah. now the law of the land that that a child, one of your children, who starts identifying as something they weren't born to be, uh, if you don't cooperate with them, that child can be removed and placed into foster care where yeah. they'll get great care. And they'll force you. They'll force that child to have their their body parts sure. surgically removed. You have no say in it, and if you say something, you could be put in jail Absolutely. for resisting. That's that's actually happening in California, yeah. and there's parents that haven't seen their kids for whom, who knows how many years well, because of it. The case that went up to uh, to the Supreme Court came out of Indiana. Yeah, wow. I mean, so you would think that Indiana is a relatively yeah. conservative state. It, it's it's voted Republican for a good bit. That's where Mike Pence came from, yeah. uh, and and you would think that uh, they would be relatively conservative, but obviously uh, it's penetrated even the deepest. Uh, uh, parts of our government, uh, the, the FBI, the IRS, the Department of the Treasury, Department of Education, Child Welfare Departments. You, you go down the list, they are being weaponized. Yeah. So uh, conservatives, Christians. Christians and conservatives want there to be freedom of speech. Everyone live how you want, live in, the, in this free country, worship at your mosque, at your temple, whatever, at your Baptist church. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion. And you're not going to be, you know, thrown out or executed for it or put in jail. But the left wants not just that freedom, they want to censor anyone that disagrees with them. And the question is, is this judge wrong? And he agreed before the show for you to call in and call him on it. You, 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 I'm not going to do it, but you can. But call 866-34-TRUTH. Should Christians stay silent? Don't speak up about gender. Don't speak up about abortion killing our young. Don't, don't, don't speak up about any of these things. Don't speak up about illegal immigration, where thousands are flooding into our country every day. Now the Chilean uh, little mafia groups are forming, and they're rob- breaking the houses and robbing people. But now in New York, the Venezuelan gang is yeah. – people are afraid of this gang, and they're, they're sucker-punching people in the streets, women, just kind of punching them. They're, they're, they're literally – and they're, they're out of jail the next day. So the crime impact – but if you're a believer, should you speak up, or should you say, you know what, that's politics – Judge Ginn, how dare you open your mouth about that? Go teach the Bible at this at this Bible college, Bible seminary, and quit talking about this stuff, sir. What say you, friends, listening right now? The number is 866-348-7884. We know how he feels. Let's take some calls on this, and maybe you think Christians should just stay out of it. And by all means, pastors, don't speak about this from the pulpit. Don't, don't speak against the evil onslaught of the day. Should pastors, again, speak about politics. J.K. Rowling isn't even a pastor. I don't even know how strong a woman of faith she is, but she's openly come out against these this hate crimes legislation in Scotland. The author of the Harry Potter. I mean, she, who has a lot to lose? She's probably a billionaire from those books. 866-348-7884. Truth lines are open. They're filling up fast. We're going to go back up to Dayton, Ohio. Listen to 106.5 FM. We got Mike on the line, on the Truth Line. Mike, you're on Truth Talk Live with Stu and Judge Phil Ginn, the president of Southern Evangelical Seminary. Go ahead, sir. Okay, Mike, let's get Mike on the air. There he is. Mike, jump on in here. I'm sorry. God bless both of you. I thought I was on, but I'm not. But um, my wife works at Target, and they're doing uh, sensitivity classes because – you know, we can't call them they or hey or whatever or he, she. Uh, it, it's it's horrible. And my wife said, and then some of the workers are wearing Black Lives Matter and uh, and all kinds of uh, T-shirts, and they're letting them wear their, their T-shirts. But my wife can't wear a Christian T-shirt that says, Jesus loves you. Um, mm. it, it's so... My wife is standing up, and she's getting persecuted, and she's doing the right thing. She's saying, you know, this is what I believe. This is what I stand for. This is what my my belief is. And she gets persecuted, and she's a trooper. I mean, she just does it with a smile and does it with heart, and and it's amazing. Um, I'm very proud of her, you know what I mean? And uh, and and she's even quit thinking about quitting, but she's you know she's not. She's been there for fifteen, sixteen years. She'll lose her pension. She'll lose all kinds of things. What about that? And, what, uh, well, let's see what the judge says about that. I mean, she's literally got a target on her back, Judge. No pun intended. What do you say to Mike and his wife for hanging in there, being a witness? Well, Mike, first thing I say to you is uh, you married a great woman. 
Uh, God bless her. Yes, sir. Uh, mm. You, you yes. outmarried yourself. I, I don't know anything about you, but just uh, what you tell me about her, uh, we need more people like her. And, and that's yes, the sir. that's one of the problems with uh, with uh, with this is and with the church in America. I think we've lacked courage. We've lacked the courage that your wife is exhibiting, and and yet Jesus said, "In this world, you're going to have trouble." I I can't not I I, I just can't stay, uh, sit here and tell people that if they stand up for the truth, that they will go through this world unscathed. Um, there's actually a court case that's very similar to what your wife went through with a young lady who uh, was working at Starbucks and just happened to say uh, that yes, she sir. did not yeah. agree with the uh, with the rainbow uh, LGBT, what I call alphabet sex mentality. Uh, they terminated her, <laughs> mm. and now uh, she's gone to court to see if they could do that. I would say, uh, first thing, as a practical matter, call the Alliance Defense Fund um, and uh, – they 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 are great to, uh, folks to work with. They they go in and and deal with this kind of discrimination. But uh, I would also say, may your wife's tribe increase. the 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 antidote to what's happening to your wife is a, is if enough of us speak up, they won't be able to silence us. But isn't that hate speech against her? I mean, isn't couldn't she use oh, their? Couldn't she? Shouldn't she oh, turn yeah. their own argument to say you all are misgendering me? You're hate speeching against me. Because I because this is what Absolutely. I believe, but but they don't they don't see it that way. They see her as the problem, and until they wipe all of us out and put us in jail, literally that's the agenda. So when do believers speak up? When are they silent? Mike, God bless you for your wife. We got to take. We're going to go to another call. Thank you for your call, man. Good to hear from you. We'll go to Cindy. God bless you and your bride. Yes, sir, Paul. Cindy. You're on Truth Talk Live with Stu. Go ahead. Hi. Um, yes, I'm from Monclova, Ohio. All right. And our church is very much by the Bible. Okay. That's it. If it's not in the Bible, you can't change it. You can't add to it. You can't take away from it. Okay. And so should Christians be silent up. about all this stuff, or should we just kind of keep no. our nose down and, and don't don't ever speak oh, up? And no. Okay. No, absolutely. That's what. And uh, he gets blasted on Facebook all the time about people saying, well, politics shouldn't be in the church. Oh, yes, it should be in the church. I mean, you have to speak what, what, uh, yeah, what's going on. I mean, he doesn't tell you who to vote for, but we talk about what's right and what's wrong. And if you don't know who to vote for by then, then you're out of luck, I guess. Yeah. So pastor, you know, so uh, judge, judge again, to Cindy's point, pastor gets up and says, Abortion is wrong. It's killing a young person. We need to protect the most vulnerable, the most helpless, the most weak in our culture. Thank God you who are adamantly pro-death and pro-choice, thank God your mom was pro-life, that she kept you so you could open your mouth and and condemn the baby to death. Okay, thank God that you're alive. Your mom was pro-life. But if a pastor gets up and says that, even in a gracious way, and teaches on Psalm 139, Judge Ginn, Mm -hmm. is that hate speech? Is that pastor talking about politics? Because that's what they're saying. Now your pastor's being all political because he's promoting pro-life. Well, uh, right. you mentioned something, ma'am, that, I, that I'm very keen on, too. Uh, I, I don't try to say to anybody, vote for this person or vote for that person. Right. I want to speak out about the issues that the Bible right. talks about. Okay, hold about. that thought. We'll come right back on Truth Talk Live, 866-34-TRUTH. More coming up. Should we stay silent or should we speak out? What about from the pulpit? What about the judge? More coming up. Hang on. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. Christians and cultural issues, same-sex marriage, gender confusion. A believer on the big soccer, the women's soccer team came out just just the other day and said, hey, listen, this is, in a gracious way, this is how I feel about gender. I don't think a man should be competing and knocking a girl's teeth out in basketball. I don't think, a, 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 you know, all these, these men are, are converting or transitioning and they're winning gold medals. Judge... Phil Ginn is president of Southern Evangelical Seminary, College of Seminary in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Judge, you haven't, you're a believer. You're running a Christian college. And some might say, hey, stay in your lane, sir. Teach the Bible and teach theology to these people. Don't speak out about, about this stuff. Yet you're still speaking out. And people are calling this show right now. Tell us if he's wrong to speak out. 866 348 7884. We're going to get on the phone with Greg here and other callers calling in as we wrap up Truth Talk Live today. But, Judge, what about this? Because literally within a day, this Megan Rapinho, Rap, Rap, I don't even know how to pronounce her name, Rapinho, came out vocally against that girl. 
and just got all mad and said, how dare you? And the girl apologizes. It's like, you, we're going to censor you. We're going to shut you down. You're going to lose sponsors. Yeah. And it could be, friend, you could go to jail as a pastor, as a citizen. If you say, you know, I believe the Bible says two genders. In Scotland, if you say that, that is hate speech, and they will lock you up. J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter books, has openly said, come and get me, Scotland Yard. But there are two genders. God made man, God made woman, and I'm not going to go do this because it's. I, I'm not going to put a, a man in a, in a women's uh, uh, uniform to win a gold medal in, a, in, a, in, a, in this horrible thing, and I'm not going to get my – because my five-year-old – you know, grandson grabs a pink crayon one day instead of a blue crayon. The teacher has an agenda to, you know, to cut him up and surgically remove his body parts and make him a girl at five years old. This is what's happening. They're forcing these surgeries. They're, you know, so what do you say, Judge? How do you speak into this absolute mess as a believer? Should you just stay silent, stay in your lane? Well, the first thing I would say to you is I don't even think they believe what they're talking about for the most part. Um, I think it's a power struggle. It, it is an effort uh, to create an issue uh, to which they can gain control over. And uh, essentially, the glue of this nation is no longer holding, and, and we're falling apart at the seams uh, because of that. And that glue was the morality that comes from God and, and from our belief in God. You don't even have to be a Christian to understand that there is a creator God, and there is a God line that that we can lay our thoughts and our processes back up against his morality and determine whether or not we're right or wrong. And and they've tried to erase that God line. And the crazy thing is the Constitution protects the transgender. The Constitution protects all classes of people. And the in, Constitution, in, including Christians. Right. And the Constitution <laughs> prevents Christians from rising up and shutting them down and putting them in jail. That's it right. prevents them from, which they're trying to do. They yeah. literally are trying to make it illegal now for us to do a Absolutely. show like this. And there is legislation. You have no idea how awful it is. And you heard about the caller who's, who's you know, wife at a major department store who they're targeting to shut her down. They can wear, they can wear anti-God propaganda all over their hat, their shirt. If she wears a shirt that simply says God loves you, she gets rebuked and could lose her pension. 866-34-TRUTH. Is the judge gone awry here? Or is he right as a judge and a Christian college president, seminary president, to speak up on cultural issues, or would he? Would you call that playing politics? And would you go to jail if they called speaking the truth about Jesus hate speech? Would you be willing to go to jail if they came after you or your pastor? 866-348-7884. He's been a great guest all hour long. Let's go to Greg, a caller in Indiana. Greg, thanks for hanging on. You're on Truth Talk Live with Stu. Yeah, I think he's absolutely right. We need to share the Bible. When I was um, in fourth grade in the late seventies, I had a teacher was a preacher and on one corner he had a Bible on the other corner, he had a paddle and he said, I can teach you guys everything you need to know with these two items. Oh my. <laughs> and it's absolutely, <laughs> okay. and, and that's wow. true though. I mean, I, it, I am it not is. doubting that at all. I had a father who was a preacher and, and he didn't hesitate to use the other uh, alternative well, means my, of education my, hey, listen, either. My parents, especially big he never hesitated to apply the, the rod of correction <laughs> to my seat of understanding. <laughs> okay. So, Wow. Well, yeah. Greg, that's and a good word. Well, Greg, now what if you do? What do you do? The the Biden administration now they're they're not only rewarding illegal immigrants with a cell phone, with free education, with all the health care that they need and housing. It, some estimated it's about a hundred thousand a year per illegal immigrant. Not only are they awarding them that, but they are now allowing them uh, gender change surgeries, courtesy of the USA. Yeah. So you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars surgery if you're an illegal immigrant. You qualify, no questions asked, go to the doctor, the government will take care of it. And, and Dr. Ginn, you wrote an article recently that now uh, President Biden is allowing illegal immigrants to apply for benefits, and they don't have to put their gender, male or female, they just put X. X. And so yeah, that's not right. the government, you know, full blown. But, but at what point do Christians speak up? And at what point do, you know, do Christians speak up, even though everyone accuses you of, you know, you're playing politics? You know, and so Donald Trump, Donald Trump got up and openly promoted a Bible on all his platforms a few days before Easter, okay? And then all these evangelicals attacked him. Man, what are you doing wrapping the Bible in an American flag? And I mean, that's a, you know, there's some good arguments. And, and, and you know, we talked about it in this show. I mean, we, and we tried to look at both sides of that. But then a few, I, da- a few days I, later, a few days later, the, the, the writing president recognizes National Transgender Identity Day 
on Easter Sunday, this most sacred day of the year, and very few of those evangelicals that attack Trump for promoting the Bible even said a word. It was crickets. Can so, Greg, go ahead. Can I make a comment? Yes, sir. Um, two things. I called you on Monday, and last night I shared with the church what Biden did. You know, that's pure blaspheme. And as far as, like, abortion, you know, abortion, what did God call um, Esau and Jacob when they were in the womb? He called them children. Mm, so when, they, wow. when they're doing abortion, that's, a good point. that's just plain murder. Yes, he sir. called them children, so God looks at as their children from the time they're conceived, mm. and to have abortion and all these things, it's just plain murder. Wait, is this and pastor? Is this pastor Greg who called in the other day? Yeah, this yep, guy speaking the truth. What Monday about this pastor? After. Hey, now, now, judge, judge, be the judge here, judge. Is he playing politics from the pulpit? How dare this pastor talk about politics from the pulpit, speaking against abortion? What do you say to him? I, I think he's speaking truth. There's a difference, and and. I want to be. I want to hasten to say our motivation is important here. Uh, we're yeah. we're not we're not picking out uh, transgenders or abortion or anything else as being the unpardonable sin. That is not the unpardonable sin. Nope. Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of sinners, including those sins that I have committed and I will commit again. Uh, I, I'm I'm not perfect, uh, but um, I think it was. Um, Pastor Sinclair Ferguson, who said it this way, he said, it's misleading to say that God accepts us the way we are. Rather, he accepts us despite the way we are. He receives us only in Christ and for Christ's sake, nor does he mean to leave us the way he found us, but to transfer, wow. transform us into the likeness of his son. Jesus told the woman who was caught in adultery, go and sin no more. You're forgiven, but go and sin no more. Uh, and, and we've got to take that mentality with us into, into the world that, that we have the antidote for the, this whole scene of depredation that these people are living in. And we need, to be, have, we need to have that ability to proclaim that gospel message to them in a loving way. And we may need to make hmm. clear as American citizens that we're going to demand our government give us that right and that privilege that's guaranteed to us in the very first uh, sentence of the Bill of Rights. Yeah, it's in the Bill of Rights. It's in the Constitution. And you talked about, uh, what did you say to me at coffee, about how the Constitution is to the country like the Bible to our uh, faith? That's what I said. The, The way we as a nation treat our Constitution is very similar to the way we as a people of faith treat the Bible. But by the the reverence that we have for those for those particular documents and for the way we interpret them and and consider the Bible to be inerrant and infallible and the same thing with the with the Constitution, then uh, we need we need to uh, we need to pay particular attention to those two documents. One as as a document of our faith, and one as the document of our of our rights and privileges yeah. as citizens of this nation. And we are citizens. And Paul appealed to Rome. We're citizens in a culture, but we're to speak the truth in love. I want to talk about that. Uh, uh, Judge Ginn, I want to say thank you to Pastor Greg, a pastor in the land who's not bowed his knee to bail. Thank God, God bless for him. you, sir. Yes, sir. Wow, great caller. So, real quick as we wrap up, Judge Ginn, your challenge to us also to, you know, you get on these issues and kind of we're reacting to these things. You know, J.K. Rowling is reacting. She could be in jail because she said in Scotland, where they just passed this, this very strict hate kinds of legislation, where if you say that a gender, if you, if you misgender someone, or if you say that God made man and woman, like Genesis says, like the whole Bible, like Jesus, you know, taught, if you say that, it's hate speech. And Scotland Yard could lock you up. J.K. Rowling said, come and get me. Because I'm not changing genders to accommodate someone who wants to identify, you know, as a lion and go biting people's arms off, you know, or whatever you want to identify as, you know. So she's pretty big vocal about this. But how do we be vocal but speak the truth in love? Tell us about that and how that ties into the mission of Southern Evangelical College and Seminary, Charlotte, North Carolina, where you haven't bowed the knee to bail. You're not woke. You have good theology, and you're engaging the culture. Quick, your mission there, and, and how can— how, what's your final call to everyone out there? Book of Ezekiel says, uh, God's talking through Ezekiel, and he said, I searched the nation for a man to stand in the gap for me so that I would not destroy the, uh, the nation, mm-hmm. but I found none. And so that's our mission at Southern Evangelical Seminary. We're going to be, we're going to be uh, standing in that gap of truth uh, ourselves. We're going to teach men and women uh, both academically, we're going to train uh, parents. We, we've got a, a new mission called uh, 
Truth That Matters that, that's really directed at churches and families to help them withstand these pressures that, that they're facing. And like this young lady who's at Target, uh, we're, we're going to be having some seminars on how do you deal with that? Where do you turn? What are some, uh, some weapons to take into that battle? Um, and regardless if the culture around us is, is losing their heads to over some new fanciful, fanciful fad of self-worship, Southern Evangelical Seminary and Truth That Matters is going to be found standing steadfast. What's your website? Truth. Folks want to hear more about SES. this. SES.edu and truththatmatters.net. All right. Look up the judge there, Judge Phil Ginn. God bless you. Thanks for being on Truth Talk Thank Live, you, my Steve. friend. Truth Talk Live. Another program powered by the Truth Network.